Hi folks. As you all know, chess is a pretty time-consuming endeavor. Hence, economy is a very important side discipline. How much output do I get for a given input? That is the question. When it comes to openings, we have to make the choice between e4 and d4. That much can be said, e4 is quite high maintenance. Of course, we can chicken out and play sidelines, for instance, against the Sicilian, but that would render our repertoire quite insipid. That's why d4 is definitely the more economic choice. You get more output per input. After d4, you have to make another choice. Do you want to follow up with c4, playing the main lines, or do you want to play some kind of queen's pawn opening? There are many of them, as you know. The Trompowski, the Toro attack, the Kolle, the Kolle Sukatot, Richter Verrazov, and of course the London system. I guess the London system is the most popular one. This is our topic of today. The London system can be played against d5, which we will have a look at now, or against Indian setups, so black not playing d5, but maybe playing knight f6 followed by g6. So after d5, most of the strong London players opt for the move bishop f4. This is a bit more accurate than the move order with knight f3. I will show you why. So after knight f3, knight f6, Bishop f4, c5, e3, knight c6, c3. The most ambitious and also strongest move here is queen b6 attacking the pawn on b2. Now white can play queen c2, but that brings him just equality, like a very slim equality, so black has some initiative even. After the normal move, queen b3, black has a very good tactical choice available. So he should now not take on b3, just showing after queen b3 question mark, a b3, white actually would be clearly better because he strengthens his uh, central control by capturing towards the center with the pawn and he has now also the open a file. That would be a grave mistake, but c4 is the right move. Now white cannot take on b6 because after a b6, now black is the one having the open rook file and maybe b5, b4 is a possibility, so black is slightly better in this position. After c4, white must play queen c2 and now comes the point of black's play he has the move bishop f5 available. Now after queen takes f5, double question mark, queen b2, we see the problem. The rook a1 has no way to escape. Black is winning. That means that after bishop f5, white would have to resort to queen c1, but after knight h5, black is slightly better. So now you see the problem of the move order knight f3 here on move 2. Bishop f4 is more flexible. Knight f6, e3. We leave the knight uh, g1 at home for the time being. c5, c3, knight c6. And now we play knight d2. So we have the knight on d2 and not on f3. Now if black would try the same as we just saw, playing queen b6. We could now play queen b3 and after c4 question mark, we could now retreat to c2 having the better position. Black of course could now not play bishop f5 because now we can take the bishop and now for instance we could play queen b1 with a winning position. After queen c2, um, white is better, slightly better, let, let's say half a pawn, because black has abandoned the tension in the center. 
giving white free hand and white can use this by playing b3 or e4 later in the game uh, with the move e4 white would undermine the pawn on c4 so if d takes e4 the c4 pawn would be quite weak as you see so after queen b3 instead of playing c4 black would have to play e6 but white is a bit better here that's uh, why instead of playing queen b6 most black players would play e6 instead now can we play knight f3 and normally black follows up now with uh, either bishop d6 or a bishop e7 today we have a look at bishop e7 this position will arise quite frequently if you play the London system this position here is important and it is also a tabia so white is now at a decision point basically there are three main moves the most popular move is a bishop d3 by far the most popular move but personally I don't like this move too much because black now could follow up with knight h5 getting hold of the bishop pair and actually equalizing quite easily that said it's still an interesting position and of course you can play this line with white if you are well prepared but personally I would prepare the move h3 h3 is a good move of course now taking the sting out of knight h5 as the bishop can retreat to h2 now of course you lose the tempo by playing h3 but the bishop is protected on on f4 and maybe you give additional sense to this move by playing g4 later on in the game so this is a very solid line for white and then there is a third move and this move is knight e5 this is a topic of my today's lecture knight e5 is actually <clears throat> the most aggressive move and actually the most efficient move against an unprepared opponent so you have a good choice between h3 and knight e5 now most players would castle here and we play bishop d3 now the most frequent move is knight takes e5 and that is a mistake it's a big mistake already and this is what we can hope for when playing the line knight e5 the best move here might be knight d7 there are other moves bishop d7 queen b6 etc but knight takes e5 is the most frequent one and when you learn the london system you can already look forward to this position because many black players flock to, to this line here it appears to be natural to, ex to exchange knights to remove this very annoying knight on e5 by capturing it now we don't take back with the bishop but with the d pawn this is very important this pawn structure is very favorable for white so this is a target position here with the pawn on e5 because the pawn e5 okay now attacks the knight so we recapture with gain of tempo right then we drive black's knight f6 away from the king side leaving the point h7 only protected by the king this is a soft spot in black's position as we will see but there's more to it the, the, the pawn on e5 um, gains or gains space for white right by controlling both squares d6 and uh, f6 so white has space advantage now uh, recapturing with the, with the pawn on e5 now black has two moves knight d7 is a better move let's have a quick look at knight d8 so this is slightly worse than knight d7 the best move on white now is um, queen h5 threatening main 
And now if black should play g6, this is more commonly played here, but it's inferior to f5. Um, white plays queen h6 and now has two very easy ideas, either pushing the pawn to h5, opening the h-file, or playing his knight to g5. White is clearly better here. This is uh, a position which is close to winning for white already. Better than um, g6 is f5, but also here white has a clear advantage. So now the best move is knight f3. White will follow up with g4. So this g4 pawn break is the typical motive in this um, pawn structure. White will open up the g file having a clear advantage as well. So the best move after d takes e5 is knight d7. On e8 the knight had not that much scope, so it's logical that knight d7 is better. But even after this move, uh, black cannot avoid standing clearly worse here in this position. Now there are many moves for white. White can claim a clear advantage both after queen h5 or knight, h, uh, knight f3. But the best move here, in my opinion, is h4. Exclamation mark. This move already comes with a threat. The threat is bishop takes h7. This threat is quite well concealed. That's why the whole line is so dangerous for black. Now, the best move for black would be f5 in order to prevent that threat. But after g4, pardon me, f5, g4, uh, white has a clear advantage. Of course, you see the attack is rolling. We can open the g-file and we can claim a clear advantage here for white. And that is black's best move. Now, what we will now look at are two other moves. Our main move is c4 and after this move, we will have a look at b6. c4 is ignoring the threat of bishop takes h7 actually forcing uh, white to his luck, right? So, well, in some games, bishop c2 happened, but of course, the initiated knows that after c4, bishop takes h7 is possible. King h7, queen h5 check, king g8. Looks a bit funny because you have only the queen there in front of the king while the bishop is placed on f4, but well, a, a piece is a piece finally. And how do we, how do we now um, justify the sacrifice? What happens now is a very slow move. So white plays this line, this attack in slow motion. Knight f3, intending knight g5, but now it's black's move. Is this really so dangerous for black? Can black do nothing about white's attacking plans? The answer is actually he cannot. Black is already lost in this position. Now there are only two series moves. One is f6, <coughs> intending to stop knight g5. And the other is rook e8 in order to clear the square f8 either for the king or the knight. Let's have a look at rook e8 first. Knight g5. And now there are two moves. You can capture the knight. h3. Now you see the idea of h4, right? So we open up the h file, threatening mate on h8. The king has to run away. And now g6 is coming. The idea is bishop g5 or queen h8 check, king e7, and then queen takes g7. So now Black has to anticipate that. But after gf7, rook f8, check, knight f6, queen g6, rook takes f7, rook h7, exclamation mark. White is threatening both um, bishop f6 and rook g7. This position is completely lost for black. So after knight g5, um, the critical move would be knight to f8, defending them against the mate on h7. 
but of course it allowing queen takes um, f7 king h8 now of course black wouldn't mind to uh, draw after the sequence queen h5 check king g8 queen f7 and so on and so forth but white now has a very nice follow-up h5 intending h6 bishop takes g5 and now h6 so for the time being white is behind two pieces but his attack is very strong g8 6 only move bishop g5 queen g5 everything is forced and now queen takes e8 so basically white has now equalized in terms of material but the threat is queen takes f8 of course black has problems with his idle pieces on the queen side queen g7 and now the rook comes here for the lift rook g3 and rook f3 are the ideas b6 intending bishop b7 but now rook g3 the queen cannot go anywhere without leaving the knight um, f8 alone so bishop b7 only move but white can liquidate into simply one endgame with an extra exchange so the move rook e8 was not sufficient after knight f3 our main line is f6 giving some space to black's pieces here preventing maybe knight g5 really no actually not white is now investing his second piece in order to open up the h file now the threat is g6 followed by queen h8 checkmate now we will have a look at two moves bishop takes g5 and rook f5 both of these moves um, prevent g6 other moves don't make any sense here so rook f5 first pinning the g-pawn right well now white plays queen a7 check now after king f8 king uh, queen g6 would follow threatening mate on h8 that's game over the more uh, competitive is king f7 but uh, now g6 is strong well there was a game actually uh, between two players i don't mention the name here where the white player now just repeated moves you know playing playing queen h5 check king g8 queen h7 he didn't he didn't see how he could break through here but i think it's not that difficult so the right move here would be g6 and of course now we cannot go to f8 this is a typical mate pattern this check on h8 and black's king not having the square e7 available because it's blocked by his fellow piece here so uh, after g6 the king has to go to e8 of course now two moves rook f8 and bishop f8 after rook f8 we play rook h8 threatening mate in one queen f7 checkmate of course you cannot take on h8 we give the checkmate on f7 so knight takes e5 what else queen e5 bishop f6 can black defend looks not too bad but we have now the move g7 that's a strong move and after bishop e5 takes it's uh, game over now after queen g7 the other move is bishop f8 instead of rook f8 but again we clear the g pawn one threat is queen takes e6 uh, followed by queen takes f5 uh, the other idea is just to play g7 and then we could put more pressure on the bishop f8 by rook h8 and bishop h6 so this g takes f8 would then become a problem for black only move which makes sense is knight takes e5 but after bishop e5 uh, king g7 the king tries to run for the hilt g7 takes takes king c6 rook h8 white 
already has an extra pawn, but uh, will most likely win in the attack as Black's king is uh, very exposed on c6. That leaves Black with um, Bishop takes a g5 here. We just had a look at rook f5. So Bishop g5, eliminating that dangerous g pawn, giving back one piece. Well, if you have two extra pieces, you can give back one piece and still hope to win with an extra piece, right? Bishop g5, so then now there are two moves. Our game, our main game, which is indicated here down, uh, yeah, beside our, our uh, diagram in our YouTube window, our main game, Popiol, Castellic, went as follows. It's not really the main line, but the other game, which I show you afterwards is uh, like a, a blitz game. So I wanted to have, to have a serious game as our our main game here. So the main game went rook uh, queen e8, check king f7, and now rook h4. This is an important motive: the rook lift to f4. So what can black do? There was one game which went rook g8 but after bishop f6 black was completely lost our main game followed uh, rook h8 it's actually it's quite pretty much the same rook f4 knight f6 rook takes f6 check king e7 check and now <laughs> checkmate by pinning the queen we can already uh, declare checkmate that was the game popio castellic ustron 2020 a bit more complicated is the line queen b6 instead of queen e8. So queen b6, but not too complicated. So you can find all these moves over the board in a tournament game. You give a check again here. The king has to go back to g8. Uh, and now again, rook h4. The rook will be useful on f4 or even g4 in some lines. So what can black do now? I'll give you three moves. I mean, the threat is uh, queen uh, h7, right? So let me show you what the threat is here. Que After queen b2, now we see the threat unfolding. Queen h7, check. Check again and it's made in two right? rook f7 queen takes f7 checkmate that was the threat after after um, rook h4 so what can black do apart from queen takes b2 knight takes e5 but then we play check here check there and of course we are now winning the rook on f8 so what can black do? Some kind of counterplay maybe with queen b2. But after rook d1, check, the king simply goes sideways. And now black is uh, yeah has run out of steam and it's white then to attack again. Also white already has uh, not such a bad material situation here with uh, an extra exchange on the board. So this is uh, one for white. And the main move after rook h4 is rook f5. Um, now the, there was a game, a blitz game, which followed queen e8 check, but the improvement here would be queenside castling. The idea simply is to bring more arms to the front. So now this rook d1 can be activated either via d4 or h1. Let's say black plays rook takes f2, threatening checkmate on b2. We can simply play b4, takes, and now rook h7 because there is no way black can do anything very harmful on the queen side. I mean, b2 would be only a check, right? King b1. 
Um, so there is nothing and white is threatening queen takes g7. That's easily winning for white. So after the nobility queenside castling, there's also the move knight f8, defending against queen h7. But now we play rook dd4, bringing the rook over to the king side. Bishop d7, rook g4. The simplest threat is bishop f6, followed by rook takes g7. Let's say g6, check, rook f4. Now the idea is um, taking on f5 and then queen f6, check, followed by mate. King e8, queen g7, threatening queen e7, checkmate, queen c5, defending against that. But now, after queen g8, black can not do anything against rook h7, followed by queen f7, checkmate. He can, of course, sacrifice his queen by queen e7 now, but that would be equivalent to resignation. Then was the line c4. So let's go back to our starting position after h4 exclamation mark. After c4, we indeed could sacrifice on h7. That was quite convincing, I guess. There's another interesting move to look at, b6. As I mentioned, the best move would be f5, but after g4, white has a clear advantage. So now b6, this move is a bit tricky for white because it, it appears to be a neutral move, but actually it defends against bishop takes h7. This is not easily to be seen though. So we should not play bishop h7 here. I'll show you why. Takes, takes, knight f3, so far so good. After f6, we would play knight g5, but now black has bishop h6 available. And now we could easily lose if we played knight g5 after bishop d3. You are well acquainted with a typical bishop h7 sacrifice in a French environment, I guess, the, the classical bishop h7 sacrifice, which we have also seen here, but in a very special form, right? The classical sacrifice goes bishop takes h7, king takes h7, and then directly knight g5, followed by queen h5. Very often, um, a possible defense against that sacrifice is bringing the queen or a bishop to the b1 h7 diagonal as it is happening here. So sometimes it's a move for queen d8 to d3 guarding the square h7 refuting this uh, bishop sacrifice. This now and then is overlooked by white players. So here bishop d3 stops the attack and white is losing. But of course white can do something about bishop d3 by playing rook d1. Again, knight g5 is uh, in the cards. But now things have changed a bit. And I show you what. Rook e8 is now possible. Knight g5 and now knight f8. This is good enough for a draw. Takes, takes, and now white should take the draw with queen h5 check followed by queen f7 check. But if he plays as in the c4 line, uh, that means h5, he will lose. Bishop g5, h6. We had this position with the bishop on c8, the pawn on uh, b7, and white's rook on a1, right? But now there's a difference. After bishop g5, queen g5, the rook e8 is defended. In the other line, the bishop was on c8, and we could play queen takes e8 with the one position. So this is a slight difference having a big effect, right? But after b6, white still has a good solution. He plays knight f3. And actually this is a one position for white. Now let's go through line by line. There are four lines, f6, a5, bishop b7, and f5. f6, 
question mark. Now we play knight g5. It's a very beautiful move. Of course, it comes with many threats. Bishop takes h7, knight takes e6, queen h5. So the knight has to be taken. And now we are in the game. Kodorov, Galinia, Pombal, 2015. Now I propose a novelty. Bishop takes h7. h takes g5, as happened in this game, is also possible. But this is more beautiful. Bishop takes h7 and better. Okay, now we sacrifice two pieces in order to open the h file. Now black has to decide where to go with his king, g8 or g6. Let's first deal with king g6. Well, the king is marching into the open. Doesn't look too good, right? f3. Um, threatening g4. Checkmate by taking the square e4 of the king. Knight takes e5, queen h7, exclamation mark. We want black, or we want to force black to block the square g6 by giving this check. So black has to block the square, and now, only now, we play queen h3. The king g6 is not possible anymore. And now we have a checkmate. This doesn't come um, by surprise, right? If the king has to walk to f5. So king g8 is a more natural move. Now there are two winning moves. Queen h5 is winning, but even better is sacrificing a third piece. And of course, this is by far the more aesthetic move. Three piece sacrifices, more or less in a row. So if the king moves to f7, check, check, checkmate. That was easy. If the king takes the rook, it's also not really difficult because now we have queen check and g6. This is a coffin nail uh, of black's position, uh, the pawn on g6. So now uh, black cannot avoid a quick checkmate. This is the longest line here, takes, takes. But now we see the typical mate pattern with the queen on h8 and the bishop <clears throat> depriving black's king of its flight square e7. That was the line f6. Then we have another game, which followed a5, but this doesn't do anything against the piece sacrifice. Of course, now we can sacrifice because the knight is closer to the king side. It's already on f3. Takes, takes. And now, well, I mean, patterns repeat, right? After king g8, it's always this move g6, depriving the king of the flight square f7 winning. So the king went out in, into the open in the, in the game. Turkmen, Tol, uh, Machevs, in ton, uh, ton, it was a Tornelo tournament actually, 2020. Um, check. And now the fastest line is again f3. In this, in this variation, knight e5 is answered by g6. And now we have this mating pattern. The game went a bit longer, but not too long. So here white played queen h7, g6, queen h3. Actually, I love, I love the final position of this game here. e4, checkmate. Beautiful, right? Driving the king <laughs> from g8 to c4 in order to deliver a nice uh, checkmate here with the queen. Beautiful game. Another move here after knight f3 is bishop b7, but that simply allowed uh, the sacrifice again. And yeah, just uh, the standard pattern. This is winning. In the game, we saw black playing king g8. Uh, the same position, but a different move order here. In the game, Aiken Aliyev, Kema 2014, black resigned. Now our final move is f5. That is a final move after knight f3. g4, the typical pawn break. You don't have to prepare it, right, with rook g1. Sometimes you can, but not here. For instance, if it's taken, you have this knight g5. You're taking e6 and h7, takes, and now um, you can win by the simple move hc5. So very often you don't have to, sac to sacrifice uh, material. You can sometimes play 
conservative move. So this would would be also a winning position here because you have this pressure here on h7. e6 is hanging now, h7 under pressure. Basically, you can castle queenside and, and double rooks on, on the h file. And normally, this doesn't hold, right? You can even triple heavy pieces on the h file by also including the queen. Or you can put a rook to h6 and then sacrifice on g6. Bishop takes g6. So this is winning in any case. But even better here after bishop g5 is the direct knockout. Bishop takes h7, takes hg5, king g8, queen g4. And again we have uh, the thread g6 followed by either queen h5 or even rook h8 sacrifice followed by queen h5, queen h7 checkmate. So the final line now is... Um, uh, pardon me, bishop b7 instead of taking on g4. This is a game. Stipich, Okosa, Zagreb 2011, gf5, ef5. Now the g5 is open. The d5 pawn is now also a bit weak and we have um, <clears throat> a passed e pawn with, uh, with some dynamic potential here. The game now, white played knight g5, that was not that good. The better move is here rook g1. If bishop h4, we can pick up the exchange if we want. It's not the only line. So this is winning already by material. So king h8, in order to prevent a bishop h6, is more natural here. But now we can play e6, knight f6, knight g5, threatening both knight f7, check, winning the exchange, and also bishop takes f5, so this is a winning position. I hope you have been entertained in this lecture. You see the London attack, albeit very solid, you can play it in a very solid fashion, right, can be very aggressive in certain variation. I hope you play some nice attacking games when opting for the London, and I wish you a lot of success. Bye-bye.